so much for watching and for tuning in our broadcast. We pray that God will bless you and truly really transform your life by the teaching and preaching of God's word. Pray you enjoy yourself through the worship, through the word of God, and New Seasons Church is a church that wants to help you transform your life to God's glory. We pray that you have a great time. If you have any issues, please email us, or email us on the website. We might be able to best support you and serve you. Once again, thank you so much for watching our service, and may God bless you. Class in June, I'm talking to the fellas. So ladies, y'all can eavesdrop on the fella conversation today. So guys, don't y'all get AWOL on the month of June because it's going to come hard and heavy. Somebody say amen. Now, for those who know me know I'm a man's kind of, I'm a man's kind of guy's kind of guy. Football, blood and guts, you know, ah, you know that kind of person. And I got you a Bible story that's that kind of stuff. So now, so when I talk about when I say a real man, Ladies, you can just say a real Christian, okay? So I don't want you to be left out the message, all right? I want y'all to start getting all feminine on me. Into my head, into so it applies to you too, but I'm going to talk about to the men. So when I, say, when I say real men, just say real Christians, okay? So turn me to 1 Kings, 1 Kings chapter 18. 1 Kings 18, 1 Kings chapter 18. We're going to get up into this thing because I'm really at the point now in my life where um, you just got to say it like it is. And I realized that we, 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 have, we have a void of men being men. And, and we have a void because men don't want to stand up and tell men how to be men because of, of the thinking that if they tell them, it, it puts a big bullseye on them. I'm not saying I am a super man. I'm going to get you what the Bible says. You don't like what I say? Go blame the Bible. Somebody say amen. amen. I'm just a messenger, not the message. But the message is kind of rough today. I want to talk about this morning, learning how to stand alone. Learning how to stand alone. Guys, there are times in our lives we have to learn how to stand all by ourselves. There are times when the world is just wanting us to do one thing, and we, as Christian men, have to learn to stand in the other opposite direction. No matter what the world may be going through and what their flow is, what the direction is, as a godly man, as a Christian man, one who loves God, we have to learn sometimes to stand all by ourselves. First Kings, chapter, First Kings chapter 18, verse 20, verse 20 says this here, And Ahab sent for all the children of Israel and gathered the prophets together for on Mount Carmel. Ahab was what I call one of the wimpiest men on the planet. Okay, Ahab was what I call a, a neutered male. Okay, he, he, he was a wimp. Jezebel ran Ahab like he was his, like he was his child. No matter what Jezebel said, Ahab did. He was a wimp on top of a wimp. He was a spineless man. He was a no man. He was a mama's baby. He was a nurse child. He was not a man at all. But because he was a king, he is what it is. Somebody say amen. But it, it, and he came up, but he came up against a real man. Verse 21 says these words, so Elijah came to all the prophets and said, now listen here now, I want you to realize that this is one man, one man versus about 820 people. Okay, by 820 prophets, he's sitting, against, and also all the world, all of Israel sitting on this one big mountain at this big showdown. Now those who've heard this message a long time, and, and, and this big showdown at Mount Carmel, but I'm focusing on the fact of what this one man did in the midst of the struggle. Elijah came to all the people and said, how long will you falter between two opinions? How long will you keep this choosing the moment from the legacy? If the Lord is God, follow him. But if Baal, follow him. Notice know, the, know the people. The people answer what? It, it's, it's a shame when God has blessed you year after year, after year, after year, after year, after year, and you still gonna say nothing. This God brought him through the Red Sea, brought him through David and Goliath, took care of him, blessed him all over and over, all over and over again, over again. And, and here when he says, how long will you choose between God and Baal, the people said nothing. Because I've learned today that we are people of the moment and not people of legacy. We make too many decisions based upon our moment and not our legacy. We have destroyed lives based upon moments and not legacy. When you realize that God's been good for you yesterday, today, and forevermore, you don't make your choice upon a moment. You realize there's a legacy involved in the decision I'm making. 
He said, how long will you choose? And the people didn't say a word. The first thing a real man does, a real man rejects passivity. A real man rejects being passive, inaction, indifferent, being a wimp. Can I go give me more adjectives? A real man going to say, how am I having it? The text says, when everybody was shutting up, Elijah said, I got this. I'm going to say something. Look at, verse, look at verse 22. Verse 22 says that I'm all by myself. Elijah and the people, I am alone. I am a prophet of the Lord. I don't care what y'all say, what y'all do. I'm going to let you know right now, the God I serve is more than enough. If I'm all by myself, I will reject passivity. I will reject indifference. I'm going to let someone know that God is who he is, and I'm going to stand for God, period, in a conversation. And I tell you now, we need more men to stop being wimps. We need more men to step and say, you know what? I will stand for God. I will take self-control. I'll be somebody, and I will be a man. And it's, it's, and let me tell you, ladies, it's not, ladies, I know deep down in your spirit, deep down in your sanctified soul, you really, really do want a man. You tie these boys dressed up as men, you want a doggone man. Okay, how much you want your freedom, your rights, and you want to burn your bra at the end of the day, girls, you want a man. Want someone to open the car for you, treat you nice, take the trash out, take the, I mean, take the trash out for you. I say, that's so, no, you want a man. Come home at night, bring home the bacon, be good, mow the lawn, do, do what we're supposed to do, not just say, it shows that some things ain't a woman's job, there's something only a man got to do. Be a man. Ladies, let me tell you some ladies, the more you let a man be a man, the more he going to be a man. Stop being his mama, let him be his own man. <laughs> I'm going to get, this ain't, this, ain't, this ain't the kind of day you want to come on Sunday morning. This is the day I'm going to get, because guess what, because I, I live in a society, and I'm watching men walk around as wimps. You realize that in today's church, I mean, I'm glad today's a good day, but in most churches today, that most churches, that 70% of your churches today are filled with women. Same percent of churches are filled with women. 95% of, of, of society has been brought up by fatherless homes. Fathers, not, 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 I said father, no, I should not say fatherless, but dadless homes. Because they had fathers because they got a child. But they have dadless homes. Anybody can be a father. It takes a real man to be a dad. And, 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 and guess what? When a dad is at home, not only does it affect, not affect, affect the son, but also affects the daughter. There's something, now, now li listen, guys, guys, you may get mad at me right now, but ladies, 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 real quick, before I even get started, you start saying I'm, I'm, I'm dissing y'all. No, 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 no. I'll tell you right now, I applaud every woman in the house today because if it wasn't for you, I wouldn't be here. If it wasn't for you, we wouldn't be where we are right now. I was raised by a strong, bat carrying pistol <laughs> can little woman named Betty Vines. Bay didn't play no game when he came to raising her son. Her son was going to be no punk. She carried a Louisville Slugger. She carried a little 22 and a, and a cigar blade that she had to to make sure I was going to take care of my business. So I praise God for strong, powerful women. But I need a man in my life. But no matter how much she taught me, mama taught me she, did the, she couldn't teach me how to play football. She couldn't teach me how to tie my tie. Tried, she did her best. But somebody having a dad, a man in your life to tell you the right from wrong, because there's something, information that only a man can tell you. I couldn't tell my mom about my first girlfriend. Come on, dudes. You can't tell your mom about what you plan on, you know. It's a, it's a drink. <laughs> but you can tell your dad <laughs> in Jesus. Well, my dad did tell me in Jesus' name. Told me the wrong things, but he told me some things. But in society, society, fellas, listen, listen, listen. Ladies, I'm going to teach this in July. Ladies, listen here. I understand men have messed up. We bought the lie of society. It's not our role. To, we bought the lie of society that we should be passive and weak because you have your rights. And ladies, you do have your right. And ladies, right now, I'm turning now. You do have power. Amen. Every man in this house know woman's got power. You be a dumb man and think a woman ain't got no power. But, I'm going to say a whole lot of but today. But, don't mess with a man's authority. That's the issue. I've been counseled for over 20 years, and the issue is not about the power. 
When you cross the lines of authority, then you make a man pissed off. You'll learn that in July. You'll learn to teach that in July. I'll teach you about that in July. So make sure you come July service in Jeans and Jersey. I'm going to teach you about how to, how to stay married and be married happily. Because women, embrace your power, leave his authority alone. You leave his authority alone, you'll be, yeah, yeah, you, you, you'll be all good. Step into his authority, ding, 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 it's time to fight. And ladies, let me tell you some ladies, if your man wants to be a man, the best way to let your man be a man, let your man fail. The reason why your man keeps rejecting, keep, keep, keep trying to be passive, because you keep nursing him. His nursing day has been over a long time ago. Pull the breast from the mouth. Let that man get a job and be a man. He don't need a mama. He needs a wife or a strong girlfriend. Get, get, you can't get a job at 1230 in the afternoon. You can't get a job. I know, I know guys right now who got two, three jobs, and you can't get one job. Don't blame society. Blame your lazy self, Priest Pastor Preach. I'm not going to get too many amens because guess what? I live in a society of passive, pacified, indifference men who blame society and don't blame themselves. I never did, I never not had to have a job. I always had a, I had a paper route. Come on, somebody here. When I had to make some money and, t and bills was tight, I didn't tell Karen to get a job. Oh, no. I got me a Toyota. I threw 465 papers every day out my little Toyota Corolla. One point, I gripped that thing was so packed, I couldn't even see, but I was throwing the paper because why? I had to do what I had to do because I was a man. Now, listen here, fellas. Stop. Re reject passivity. Pimping ain't cool. It ain't cool to be a pimp. That's a fool mentality. Don't, you want your man, you want to respect me? Earn your respect by being a man. The text says Elijah stood all by himself because no one was standing with him because why? They kept trying to see what can God do. If you know God been good, if you know God been faithful, then stand and be a man. Because let me tell you something, when a young boy don't see a man, he grows, up, he, grows up, he grows up in a man's body with a boy mentality. And the reason why so many men out here right now are still boys, because wives, girlfriends, they trade their mama breast for yours. Let that boy know you can't live here without no job. No ring, no thing. I will not be at least with an option to buy. Women, you control. Women, you can. Woman, you control that thing. Y'all got power. Tell a brother, no. Cut it off. Seal, locked. Throw away the key. Oh, he gonna marry you. Oh yeah. Tell that brother now. He'll find him a, a trick. Some goofy girl. But he won't have you. And he can, see, he can keep being with Goofy Girl, because over time he realized, she goofy. Because Goofy is what Goofy does. But he'll keep bringing his nose towards you. I said no. 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 Do that for one year. This ring, brother. <laughs> He'll drop to that one knee, put that ring because the brother get to get tired of waiting. If he wants some, he gonna go get what he wants. Brother, say amen. amen. But the issue is, can you show the strength to say no? I tell you, I tell, I tell you one more time. The quickest way to get married is saying no. You keep saying yes, you keep getting delayed. Because once he hit it, you become, <laughs> back, I'm going I'm to I'm I'm date myself, I'm going to date myself. Um, Eddie Murphy made, did, did a stat comment, and he thought, so he said, you just become a, a regular cracker. You know, you, you thought you was a rich cracker. After you hit it, you just a regular saltine. You, you, you ain't nothing special. You ain't you just, just a cracker. I thought you was a salt, I thought you was a rich cracker. You just a regular saltine cracker. You, you, ain't, you ain't nothing special. Because if I played you, who else done played you? And see, once you lose your status, hmm, 
So guys, real men reject passivity. Real men, real men, real men can tell a girl no. Real men can tell a girl, um, nah, we ain't doing that. All my single men out here who are around. Now listen, single guys here, this is the wrong church. You want to come in and be a dog. You can be a dog at church down the street, but down here, I don't like dogs. I like real, because I got a dog. His name, his name, his name, his name is, is, is Brooklyn. And Brooklyn is a dog. If I put Brooklyn around a female dog in heat, he's going to hit it, because that's what dogs do. <laughs> a real man can say, uh, not right now. Because see, I can't go there like this here. <laughs> a real man will say, listen, there's some things right now that are more important than this thing right here. I'll get back to that in a minute. But right now, we got to discuss this. A real man got self-control. A real man got honor. You keep this tossing to the man, all the, he'll realize you don't respect yourself. You don't respect yourself. How the way are you going to respect me? So a real man said, no, no, no. I'm, I'm, I'm reject being a passive man. I'm rejecting not saying. Because see, sometimes, here's most men. Sometimes, you don't believe me? Go, go, go to Genesis chapter 1. Genesis chapter 3. Let me show you, let me show you the beginning of, of the first passive man. And sometimes, ladies, we can't help it. Our, our grandfather was passive. Our, grand, our great, 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 grandfather was a wimp. Check it out. Genesis chapter 3, verse 6. Genesis, Genesis chapter 3, verse 6. Check it out. Curse of a passive man. So when the woman saw that the, the tree was what? It was what? Now, man, hold, hold, go, 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 give me verse 4. Give me verse 4. Let me show you start the whole thing right quick. The servant said to the who? Okay. Ladies, I'm gonna, I ain't going to say nothing. I'm going to put it together. But the servant talked to the what? Woman. For God knows that in the day that you eat, your eyes will be open, and you will be like God, God knowing good and evil. Verse 6. So when the woman saw that the tree was what? It was what? It was true desire to make one what? She took and what? She, she unlined the word she gave. He wasn't out naming animals, wasn't out hunting, wasn't out fishing, wasn't out doing manly stuff. He was standing right by himself being a passive, went, letting the talking snake talk his wife into foolishness. That's why I call this the silence of Adam. And guys, sometimes it's okay to be quiet, but sometimes you got to say how you tell them, tell them how you feel. A passive man, a silent man causes chaos. But him not saying nothing put us all in the chaos. The text says she gave to, he allowed this entire conversation of untruth. Adam knew the truth of what God said. But the whole time Satan was putting out his untruth, Adam didn't say what? A mumbling word. He was being what? Passive. And then when he had the chance to be a man, he was even more passive and he what? Ate. He could have said, nah, I ain't doing this. God ain't say that. No. Nah. Satan, get thee behind me and sit down. See, God gave the authority to who? Adam. Adam. So don't y'all be blaming Eve for the fall. Blame a passive, weak, spineless man called Adam. If Adam would have told Satan to get thee behind me, man shall live by bread and every word proceed from the mouth of God, like the second Adam did, we wouldn't be in the problem we are now. Men, don't let foolishness come into your house. Reject passivity. Now listen here, you got to argue and fuss now. Be a wise man. No one to hold them, no one to fall, no one to walk away. <laughs> Every fight ain't a good fight. Every battle ain't a good battle. Pick and choose which one to go to. You know, you, you know your spouse. If you know this is going to cause World, World, World War Five, pick another day. But say something about this. Say, listen here, um, this situation here is over, and, I, and we're not to deal with it anymore, and this is what we're going to do, and we'll talk about it in, 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 in a minute and walk away. Women gonna go, no, no, I'm talking, no, no, listen, baby, I don't told you, no, listen, listen here. We're not gonna be arguing. This situation right now is over. And in about an hour, we'll come together and talk because right now you're too hot. 
I'm too hot, and two hot heads can't make a cool decision. So you go away for half an hour, I go away for half an hour, we'll come back when both cool and make a cool decision. Cool, walk away. Yeah, yeah, now see, girls going, shoo. No, oh no, oh no, you ain't. Oh no, you gonna talk to me. And all your neck weaving is messing up the situation. Oh no, say, women, say, okay, cool. Because you do know, ladies, you talk more to us. And we do come back in 30 minutes. We gonna have our 10,000, you gonna have your 40,000 words and we give you 30 minutes, we give you 30 minutes to get more words. We still gonna go and say, uh-huh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I understand. I, I feel you. I'm with you. Well, y'all go. Yeah, gotcha. I hear you. Right on. But at least you're doing it in a calmer state. Without the neck, without the neck movement. Ladies, let your man tell you, let's do it later on. Because what happens is sometimes you make a moment into a mouth, you make an a, a issue into, into World War Four. Learn how to let your man, let's, ladies, if you got a man, let him lead. I tell, I tell, I tell, Karen is the epitome of, like my, we have rules in our home and, and like trash. Like Karen ain't touching the trash. Ladies, I'm talking about Karen ain't, t I, I do a lot of traveling. I do. I pray I come back on Friday. If I don't come back on Friday, I come back, trash is over. She like, you sure took it out on Wednesday. You knew you was leaving on Friday. I ain't touching no trash. Karen will, Karen, Karen, Karen can play, um, that, you know, getting connected, we stack everything up. She could do that with like ninja style. I've seen Karen stack up trash so high because she ain't going to take out trash. I come in, I'll be like, no, Karen, this is a tall pizza. She go, I don't touch trash. That's a man's job. I'm like, all right. Because every now and then I get, you know, get tired, get lazy, but Karen ain't having that. And guess what? It's like, but my turn is dishes. <laughs> Shoot. Shoot. I can stack a dish. Yeah. <laughs> I can stack a dish. Oh, yeah, I can stack a dish. Those suckers be leaning to the side. Like, oh, yeah, like that. I throw a cup on the top of dish from, from way in, in, in. I be always in the living room. Watch this. Yeah. Bing! Why? I ain't touching dishes. She don't touch trash. I don't touch dishes. We got a clear understanding about what we do what. But now... If I choose to do a dish, I put it in the dishwasher, but I, put, but I can choose. Because we made rules, we, we, we have rules, and guess what? She lets it fail. Ladies, if you don't let your man fail, he'll keep being passive. Let your young boys fail. Let your young boys, let me tell you something right now. Most of these young boys can't be boys because you're not letting them get around strong young men. Teach them how to be a man. Let them fail. Let him scrape his toe. Bump his knee. If he don't, he going to be another wimpy young man. Not understanding manhood. Because ladies, I know ladies right now, ladies, you are tired of these young grown men who grow up. These young grown boys and not these young grown men. And the church should produce nothing but young men and not grown young boys. Every man in this church here, every man in this church here, you see a young boy, you see a young boy in this church here, I want you please, in the name of Jesus, go to that young man, grab his hand, give him a look in my eye, look me in my eye, and give him a firm handshake. Teach him how to be a man up front. If he don't, he gonna be like this here. How many of y'all know that's a wimpy handshake? I can't, how many men, how, how many of y'all can't stand wimpy hands? Come on. Even, even the girls going, I can't stand with handshake. Little punk handshake. 
No, grab my hand and look me and look me, look me in my what? In my eye. Now let's see, let's see, let's see. Yeah, there's some things a boy don't learn automatically. He learned by watching it. Now Javon, don't get mad at me, Javon. Javon has changed now because he's been with me for a little while. I never get my little nephew first got here, and we go. I take my, my little nephew to the bathroom, and my little nephew going to the, the, the stall. Go in the stall. And I would hear, you know, you usually go to the stall, you hear plop, plop. I said, well, maybe he forgot. So went back out there again, said, take, take him to the stall, went back to the bathroom again. Just the second time did this, and I hear, bzzz. then hear plop, plop. The third time I said, hold up, come boy, what's the matter? Well, you're going to the bathroom. No, no, you don't go to the bathroom, you go to the bathroom here. Yeah. <laughs> what, see, cause see, as he, he, his mama, his mama, when he go to, she take him to the bathroom, and ladies' room is what? There's what? Ain't no man thing. So I said, come here, boy. Stand right here. Put your hand like this here. Let it rip. Two shakes. Put it in. Wash your hand. Wash your hand. He said, real? I said, yeah, come on. Let's do it. We, 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 we have practice. Come on, come on, come on. Come on. Because why? He didn't know. He thought he was supposed to go there and... Because why? That's what he saw. He don't do it now. I mean, he cool now. He too cool now. He <laughs> you got some man in him now. Now, was that her fault? No. She had, her boy had to go to the restroom. She had to do what she had to do. There was no man around. Men in this church, we cannot let our young boys become feminine because we're not willing to step up being men. Help them, help our mothers, help our, men, our boys grow. <laughs> not only does a real man reject passivity, but a real man also accepts responsibility. A real man accepts responsibility. He knew that first, but listen here. If one of the speak for God, I'll speak for God all by myself. Let me tell you something right now. New Season Church better get a huge account, a, a huge get out of jail account for me. Because I don't care what society says, I'm going to preach the word of God in season, out season. If I got to go to jail and become a, 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 a carrying jail card member, I'm going to teach the word of God, period, no matter what society says. I'm not going to be moved by society on what their new issues are. Right now in California, it's, it's called AB, AB 1278. AB 1278 is a bill that if Johnny decides he wants to be Joanne, he can go into the girl's bathroom. If Joanne decides she wants to be Johnny, she can go into the boy's bathroom. That's in our Senate right now being passed. Not based upon what they wear, based upon how they feel. So each morning, it can be somebody different. Well, to me, that sounds stupid. I see rapes. Pregnancy's going up. Assault's going up because I tell you right now, I wish Johnny would come out and my girl's back. And I found out I'm going to go get Johnny to lay hands on Johnny. He going to he, he know, exactly, he, he know exactly he ain't Joanne. When I get through with him, he going to be real clear his name is Johnny. And I'm, I'm going to jail. Now, listen, we as a church, now listen, I don't reject people. I reject sin. I don't want y'all to come against people. Come against sin. Real men accept responsibility. There's some things that we have got to stand up as Christians and as men and realize that we are men and, and deal with. Now listen here. Don't be no man over and say, do what I say. No, 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 no. Live what you say. The reason why women won't respect us now is because we keep saying things but don't do something. You want your woman to respect, respect you? Then be a man and live like a man. Walk like a man. Talk like a man. Don't pick and choose when to play your man card. Be a man 27 hours a day, seven days a week. Don't be a man just when, just when you want to win, win the argument. No, be a man when ain't nothing to fight about. Still be a man. Be a man just on a normal day. Be a man. Be a man when just, when it just, when just, when just, just, just to be a man. Be a doggone man. We need men today. We need men to, let me tell you something, men. We, this, this Saturday we had a men's class. And um, guys, those who don't come to our men's meeting, you're missing a blessing. You're missing a major blessing. In the men's class this weekend, last weekend, um, one out of three men, one out of three men nationally have not had a father in their life, a daddy in their life. One out of three men. I watched the video in preparation for the class, Brother Harold, and in the class it, had, it showed one out of three men. When I taught the class, Lieutenant, 
at our session, one out of three men didn't have a father. I saw the, the reality of the video in my church. In the video, it said how this man lost his dad at 20. In the class, we had a guy who lost his dad at 22. In the video, how his dad left him. Everything I saw in the video was happening in my church and with my men right there in front of me. I realized, beloved, a manless world is a chaotic world. Not taking nothing from the mother. We need women. We need strong power. But let me tell you some ladies, there's something about a father and a dad that will balance out the household in a way that you just can't understand. And man, for some time, ladies, you ain't got to understand. Just deal with it. There's some, you, you, ladies, you, those who got, a, those who got two, two, two family households, you realize how you could be fussing, yelling, yelling, and the, the he show up? And stuff just stop? You ever know that? I be mind, we had, we had all them kids. It, it, I mean, we, we raised them six kids. Six be Christy going crazy. I'll, I'll open the door. I'm going to tell your daddy, don't do that. Because they knew daddy was like, daddy had daddy issues. Mama going mama gonna to whoop us so long. Daddy got issues. Daddy got delay whoopings and, and multiple whoopings and, 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 and will come back and whoop you. I mean, daddy got issues. He played mind games. I'm going to tell your father. Why? Because something about a man's voice. You can say, come here, come here, come here. You go, come here. <laughs> come on, mothers. Come on, mothers. Come on. Something about a man's voice make, make a child's back get straight. <laughs> yes, sir. Oh, and don't call me by my don't, don't call me by my first name. Parents, if your child calls me by my first name, I'm gonna have to adjust your child in church. I'm not their friend, I'm not their buddy, I'm their pastor, and, they, and my name ain't Al. It better be all these kids don't miss these kids. I see what's my name? Pastor. What's my name? What's my first name? Pastor. What's my last name? Pastor. You a good child. You a good old child. Why? We ain't cool. All this, all this nonsense about, 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 about we supposed to be friends and no, nah, we ain't friends. I'm your parent. I'm an adult. I, got, I, I need respect. I can respect you as a child. But if you, get, you, you think you can be in my adult conversation with you a child, you crazy. And men, you just start telling kids, sit down. Oh, he cute? Sit down. He, he, he sit down. Like homeboy, he cute. Homeboy cute. That's my man. He cute. He my man. He my man. I got him, though. Oh, yeah. I got him, boy. I'm, I'm going to make her cry one day. I'm going to take her to the barbershop and get his hair cut. <laughs> she going to cry. She going to cry. Because you know what? I, 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 did, I did it one time before. I had this one boy. He had just like that cute long hair. Cute, cute long hair. Cute. I said, girl, can you get the hair? No, in my bed. I said, girl, he, he ain't no Barbie doll. He's a boy. She said, I said, I said, I said, I said, I said let me have for the weekend. Sure. <laughs> so I'm letting, I'm letting you know. I'm going to ask you for the weekend. <laughs> so be ready when you come back. Now I'm going to have all the hair in the bag. <laughs> but he's going to get it cut. Took that boy the weekend. I said, come on. Took him to the barber shop. Gave him a nice high fade. He cool now. Shake my hand, shakes my hand. Hey, Pastor. Why? He ain't confused. He ain't weird. One, am I a boy? Am I a girl? Cause he needs to know he a, a tight fade is a boy. So I put him. In, I put him. In, I put gave him a boy cut. Told him to shake my hand. Cut that man. Cut, cut, cut that, that child. See you. A haircut. Cut childishness off you. So I'm gonna cut that challenge off of him. Cause why? As a man. My dad, told, my dad told me twice a month, and one of them, one of them Saturdays, I went and got a haircut. Why? It was a man thing to do. To this day, I get a haircut twice a month. Why? My dad, my, my, the stuff he taught me, I learned. Okay? Now, you get older, you want to grow your hair, like you like Fonzie, do what you want to do. Some of y'all, some of y'all like that dog on. <laughs> Suave, whatever it is, do, the, do, do, your, do your thing. You know, do your thing. I ain't playing, I ain't playing hating at you. But, but as a child, I'm going to cut that thing. 
Now you grow when you get older, but as a child, you're gonna you gonna you gonna get some cut. You're gonna be suave at five. You're gonna be Billy, sit down. Now listen, it's my responsibility. It's my responsibility. Now I'm gonna ask her. She might say, no, I'm okay, cool. But I'm gonna keep asking her. And I'm gonna wear her down. <laughs> wear you down, baby, wear you down. Why would, why would she least expect him? Well, just, he going to do something going to drive her crazy. Take him! Yes. I'm, taking him I'm taking him right to Arvis. Hook him up. Arvis, not a cousin boy. Hook him up, Arvis. Cut that thing right off. High fade. Yeah. He's straight. Yeah. Why? Because it's my job as a man, because I realize if I don't do it now, he's going to grow older and be yeah. jacked up. Yeah. And guess what? He might want to rob me. Yeah. And I'll be too old to fight him. I'm just, I'm just saying. <laughs> Old men, we fight different now when we get older. You know, so we, we, do, we, do, we, do, we use different things as we get older. I'm trying to save his life. But guess what? Because he don't learn how to respect us. Respect, uh, one of the problems right now, most our young men, they don't know how to respect authority because we don't show them authority. They'll cuss a cop out. They'll cuss a teacher out because why? There's not a father in the house telling them how to respect authority. Man, we got, to re- we got to accept our responsibilities and be men in the church and be men in society. Society needs us. There are young ladies right now, ladies, you, you may not admit it, but you are hurt by not having a father. There's certain things your father could have taught you. Because he wasn't there, you had to learn in the street. You had a father, he'd have taught you some things that you didn't have to learn the hard way. Don't get mad at me, it's just it's being real. And I'm not saying women, you, you, women, you mothers, you, just, you single moms, y'all didn't do a good job because my mom did, she did good with me. But some things I, I had to go through that she, that's, there's, some, yeah. there's some fill in the blanks she couldn't fill. You, 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 you have a lesson and get all them fill in the blanks and you can't and ain't, ain't filled them and there's some important fill in the blanks there was some important fill in the blanks my mother couldn't fill for me only a man could and at 30 years old Deacon Bell taught me how to be a man at 30 at 30 I had, kids, I had two three kids by that time and I was just learning how to be a man we can't have that in church I need men to show up be men be responsible men. Now listen, every man ain't going to be Rambo. Be the kind of man God made you to be the kind of man. But at least be a man. Don't come home on time. Have some accountability with your wife. Have some accountability with your, with your kids. Spend time with them. Be a man. Let me tell you something. When you get older, when, when you... I had kids early on in life. Now I have to reflect on what, I, on what I've done as, 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 a, as a parent. Man, it, it's a mind game now. I'm going, man, there's some things I could have did differently if I could do, do it again as a man. For instance, my daughter, my daughter's bless her heart, daughter, my daughter Jasmine, my daughter, we, we had a, a, a father's daughter email thing this weekend. And... Um, I prayed for my entire life that my daughter, Jack, my dad's daughter Jasmine, has hearing has hearing, hearing hearing issues, and I prayed my entire life that God would heal my daughter, that He would heal her, she would miraculously heal, that she'd be straight. Because when she, those who know my daughter, when we grew up, that she wore braids. Every time you see a picture of my daughter, she has braids in her, because when she was younger, she was ashamed of the hearing aids. As I would pray all the time, God heal my daughter. She would not be ashamed of who she is and, and what she hears and her hearing loss and that. And we hear with braids, we braids, we braids, we braids, we braids. She wrote me an email and said, I ain't shame. She put her hair, she put her hair in a bow. Them things be sticking out like this here. She be doing signs. She don't care. I realized in the email, God, you did heal her. You didn't heal her the way I want you to heal her. But she ashamed no more because why? She's healed. Parents, there's sometimes you think. You want a healing, and God will give a healing. A diff- He'll give the healing the way he wants the healing, and not the way you want the healing. 
And my child taught me that this week. See, a real man is always learning, his, always learning about who he is. And I'm trying to get better. So I get these, 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 these. I'm trying to get, get some adopted kids. I'm, I'm going to be the bomb dad this time. I'm going to be the bomb dad. I'm going to make Father Knows Best look stupid when I get done with my kids. These kids are going to be amazing kids. Because hopefully this time I do it right. Listen, look, look, look at verse, look at verse, look at verse. Um, go, to, go to verse 26 for me real quick. Verse 26, get you out of here. So here, here now the world is yelling at the, the way we lodged the ATC. He said, listen, Bill, you guys get your, get, get, get your bull, and I'm going to give me an offering, and y'all going to go put some on your altar. I'm going to put some on my altar. And so the Bill, people probably are yelling, screaming about, Bill, Bill, come down, send fire. Bill, Bill, he's a man. He can do it. Nobody can. And he, they're yelling, screaming, and they leap in the air. And, and don't the world do like, Don't the world do all kind of wild things right now to get our attention? And they're yelling, screaming, drop like this, bump, 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 all that kind of nonsense stuff, whatnot. And they yelling, screaming, and he going, yeah, 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 yeah. Look at verse 20. Look at verse 26. Verse 27, he says, hey, he can't hear you. Cry a little louder. Maybe he's asleep. Maybe he's busy. Maybe he, went, maybe he went to the bathroom. Yeah, a little louder. Do something. Do something to let your God know he's around. And beloved, tell you something. Don't you realize now how much they do stuff? How much they do stuff is still our old stuff is the best way? How many realize that the old way is always the best way? At the end of the day? If you, if you, if you for real with yourself right now, I guarantee you right now, if you, if you for real with yourself right now, you wish you would have waited. You wish you would have did it differently. So the old ways are the best ways. You made them, you, 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 made, you, you, you rebounded well, but you, but you got the nightmares of, of the rebound. Bell yelling, bell screaming. Look at verse, 20, verse 28. Cried aloud, kept crying, cutting themselves. Verse 29. Kept doing it, kept doing it, kept doing it. Still no, no, no noise. Verse 30 happened. Lot said, enough's enough. Real men reject passivity. Real men accept responsibility. Also, real men lead courageously. Real men, a real man ain't scared. He said, enough's enough. Come here, Israel. Tell what we're going to do. He made them he put 120 gallons of water when there was no water on the altar. He said, do it three times. Because why? He going to show them the kind of God we serve. Because too many people in the church have a Janet Jackson mentality. What have you done for me lately? If God bless you in the past, can he bless you in the future? Yes. If God bless you in the past, can he bless you in the now? Yes. Why do we got to keep trying to challenge God about God trying to, God trying to bless him when he's already proved himself in the past? If God don't bless me another day, yes. wow. yeah. he's done enough right now to keep me feeling happy for the rest of my life. You don't hear me. If God don't bless me, Lieutenant, another day, my kids is doing well. I'm still yet alive. I got a church that people come and hit me. I don't know why y'all come, but y'all here every weekend. Guys, I got people who say they need me. I got a wife and kids. I'm being blessed. If you don't do one more thing for me, God, in case you forgot, I want to say thank you. Don't get, I don't need another house, another car. Who I'm, it's all good because God has been real good. He is, his credit is good with me. Now you might need him to prove to you every day he's faithful. Uh-uh. Nah. I could get my photo album and realize how he faithful he's good to me. I remember driving my, my, my Toyota every, my Toyota was so loud, my kids would say, here come dad. <laughs> Two blocks away. It was loud. It'd be, ah, here come Rev. You can't hear my car now. <laughs> God's been good to me. Real men will lead courage, even in the midst of you don't understand. There's sometimes things, guys, I don't understand. Let me tell you something. I can't explain why God didn't do this or why God didn't do that. I don't understand. But I do know this one thing. I can trust him when I can't see him. I know I can trust him because I do know God's character. 
God is not trying to bring me down. He's trying to build me up. So whatever he's doing at the end of the day is to build me up, not to bring me down. As long as I can trust his character, I can survive what he's putting me through. The issue is most men have never, because we didn't have a father, can't understand a heavenly father. Because our earthly father didn't, wasn't there for us. And we can't connect the two. Therefore, we can't lead courageously, but we have been shown how to lead. I have to learn from the Bible how to be a man. From the Bible that, that God, I, so I learned, so I stopped blaming my, my dad, because I was quite that my dad wasn't at my games. God said, he wasn't there, but I was. I watched every game you played. I watched when you ran for 220, 300. When you score seven touchdowns, I watched every game you played. I watched everything you've done your whole life. I remember mean, I was there, and you, I saw you in your mother's womb. I have never left you nor forsaked you. And when I realized that God was, God saw me jump out the, out the three-story building and land in the bushes and kept running. He was there. God blocked the bullet when my dad came back. He was there. When I realized that God was with me every step of the way, I, I, I got over my non-daddy issues and said, I do got a dad. His name is Jesus. And when I got my mind that God loved me, oh, when God realized that God loved me, and I, had to, I didn't have to perform in front of an, an, an invisible dad, that God, was my dad, that God was my dad, I could lead. I don't know how to lead this church. I don't. I don't, I don't, I don't know how to do it. But dad does. I don't, I don't, I don't know how to preach. But dad does. I don't, I don't know how to go from this place to that place. But, but if I trust my dad, he'll show me. So I'm telling you this morning, men, lead courageously. Is it going to be hard? Yes. Difficult? Yes, but at the end of the day, you get to go to a graduation, your son gets his name called. I told y'all last week, my son's apology letter right here in my Bible. When we come home next month, I'm going to give it to him. Because I prayed this, I read this thing every day with my son who was tripping in school. He said, Dad, you just keep trusting me like you trust God, and you're going to see it's going to be worth it. He wrote on Facebook, to the man that believed in me when I didn't believe in myself, to my pop, there's something about a man leading his boy and his daughter and his kids. Men, if you want to be a strong man, be a godly man. There is nothing stronger and, and more sexy than a godly man. A godly man is sexy. I ain't lying. The American, the American gonna be amen, 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 amen. Where your man? He come, he, he be home about five minutes. Where's, where's money at? In the bank. What are you doing? What are we doing? He thinking about me. A godly man is sexy. I'm letting you know right now. It's them thug little drunk rats that ain't cool. Tell you something, guys. You want, you want, you want to be a great lover? Learn the word. When you learn to love your wife like Christ of the church, you'll have no drama. Because your wife is dying to love you like the Bible said, but she's waiting for you to be, love her like God said, love her. But you got to lead courageously. And ladies, when you, now ladies, listen, 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 ladies, it don't happen overnight. And don't y'all be keeping score either. I know y'all. I know y'all. I know y'all. Mm. It's Tuesday. He's still crazy. <laughs> Thursday night. <laughs> Y'all keep track of everything. Give the brother a chance. 
How do you know you're going to mess up? Because he's human. But if you keep encouraging him while he's while he going through, it'll become autopilot. You keep reminding him about how, how jacked up he is, how no good he is, he will, it'll become his habit of being no good and jacked up. Encourage your man every now and then. And, don't, and, 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 and stop the scorecard. When you do your thing, I'm doing my thing. You, you can't live like that. I told, you, I told you on Wednesday night, if you be the best you, you going to be, you'll change your spouse. Because you can't change your spouse yourself. God can. But you first got to change you. When you change you, let your man, let God let work on your man, your man will get right. Let your man lead courageously. Let your man fail every now and then. I'll tell you something, one of the best things Karen did, Karen, best thing Karen did, let me lose, almost lose my house. I ain't lying. My wife don't know this day. She don't know who, she don't know, she don't know who to who to no go to. She don't know who, she don't know who, she don't know, she don't, she don't, nothing. Chuck, nothing about the house. We always walked to the house, man. She was like, well, no, God will give us a bigger house. <laughs> Baby, I messed up. I understand. But my daddy ain't gonna put me in a mess up house because you messed up. I'm looking for a million dollar house. We kept our house and can't let me fail. I will never ever in my life put my fan back in that position again. I learned from my foolish mistakes to read the fine print very well. I didn't take a moment, a, a quick gain for long term loss. But she let me lead and let me fail. Sometimes, ladies, your husband's best lesson of his life is the mistake he made that you support him in. You know what I'm saying? A mistake he made that you support him in. It's wrong. I'm with you, baby. You know it's going you know to be crazy. Baby, I'm with you. And when that thing fail, you say, how are we going to survive now? How are we going to make it work? Baby? Come on, come on, boo. How are we going to do it? Man, you do, something, you do something to your man that moment that puts him into a level of faith, of, of strength to say, girl, you mean you ride or die? Baby, listen. Good days, bad days. I'm, I'm with you, hella hot water, ride or die. How are we going to do this thing? Oh, your man going to make it happen. If he got to work 15 jobs, he's going to make it happen for you. Because why? If he know he got to ride or die girl with him to death do him part, he's going to make it happen. He got a nagging, I told you so. <laughs> he's going to trade up. <laughs> trade down. He's going to do something. He's going to do some trading, tell you that much. He's trading something. Because you're going to take the nag with so much. If a man just goes, I ain't got to deal with this no more, and walk away. That's why in church, divorce rate in church is 50%, just like it is in the world. Because y'all not learning to love each other the way Christ loves each other. So guys, listen, I'm done. From now on, am I saying be Superman? No. Am I saying be Rambo? No. I'm saying be a godly man. Be a man that rejects passivity, accepts responsibility, and will lead. If you can't lead, find another man to talk to about your leadership. There's nothing in this church here that have been there, done that, that can help you lead. But you got to be willing to humble yourself and learn from, from another man. You never had a father? It's okay. We got enough fathers here to help you understand fatherhood. And in case we fail, we got a heavenly father who's done a great job with all of us. Yeah. And ladies, if you haven't had a dad or a father, yes. I apologize for you. Yeah. But you have a heavenly father that said, you're the apple of his eye. You're the you're, you, you are fearfully one of your made. You're blessed to be a blessing. Your daddy loves the heck out of you. You are not dysfunctional. You are not disfigured. You are perfectly made by the hands of a mighty God. And don't let no jacked up man tell you otherwise. Don't adjust nothing from some, for some dude. You are perfect just the way you are. You hear me? Don't tip, tuck, do jack. You are perfect just the way you are.
God's daughters, you God's child. When you learn to, to accept yourself the way God accepts you, you'll learn to walk away from foolishness. you learn sometimes I got to stand alone. This message wasn't one I knew was one I wouldn't get a whole lot of amens. But sometimes I got to stand as pastor. And guys, I love the heck out of you. I want, a, I, want a, I want a strong man church. I do. I do. I want a strong woman church. I want a strong family church. I want a strong godly church. I've seen the horrors. I've seen the horrors. Destructive words. Destructive people. I've seen churches destroy people with bad teaching. Ain't gonna happen. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. God loves the heck out of you. God made you the way you are, not for a mistake, because He made you that way, because you are awesome that way. He uses you daily, daily to show how great He is by how you live your life daily. Don't deny yourself from that. At the end of the story, fire comes down and, and God wins. Beloved, look at yourself right now. Y'all winning right now. Everybody in this room, you ain't where you used to be. You're not where you want to be, but you're a whole lot better than what you could be. And for that, you've won. Give God some praise. You, you've won. You've won. You've won. Let's start standing on the Word of God. You're here this morning. Pastor, I've been, I, don't, I haven't had a father or mother. I've been by myself my whole life. Well, I understand. I can identify with your situation. But I know a God. I know a God. That'll come down and sit with you and talk to you. I know a God that'll tell you you are fearfully and wonderfully made. I know a God that'll sit down with you and wipe every tear from your eye, according to Revelation 21 and 4. He'll love you when nobody else love you. I know a God that will. When your mother and father forsake you, God said, I'll be right there with you. You may have tried religion, but you haven't tried Jesus. Because religion don't work. Don't work not one bit. But oh, a relationship with Jesus will change your life. You're here this morning. And you tried, you tried church. You still stuck. Let's take it deeper. Let's try relationship this morning. You tried religion and still stuck. Let's go deeper this morning and go relationship. You're here this morning. You've never confessed Christ as your Savior. You never call on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. Say, Lord, I, I believe that you came upon this earth. You died. I believe you, sent, I believe you lived the. You reject passivity. I believe you accept responsibility. And Lord, you were led courageously, God, by going to the cross for my sin. And you died upon the cross for my sin. And now you're blessing me by seeing the Father saying, no, Lord, he's your child. I died for him. You're here this morning at your seat. It's real, it's real easy. It's real, it's real easy. The process isn't hard. You just have to believe in your mouth, believe in your, confess with your mouth, and believe in your heart that Christ did that for you. And the process of salvation will be done. But the journey will be ongoing. And I want to be here to help you lead that journey with you. If you're here this morning. If you've never said the, the sinner's prayer, the confession's prayer of, of the faith, I want to lead you in that prayer this morning. Be part of that journey. If you're here this morning, you've never called on Christ as your Savior. At your seat, those heads are bowed and eyes are closed. Those are praying for God to do great things. If you're here this morning, you never confessed Christ. Would you please just raise your hands? Pastor, I need Jesus Christ. I've tried everything else, Pastor. You know what? I do need Jesus Christ. If you're here this morning, please, would you raise your hand? Watching online, just raise your hand. Say, Pastor, I need Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ will start the process right now. Years more, please raise your hand. 
Secondly, you may have been in church your whole life. And somehow that church, that mean church ran you away from God. God loves you, beloved. He wants you to come on back home to him. If that's you this morning, you want to come back home? Please come home. If you're here this morning, you want to come back home to God, would you please raise your hand, Pastor, I need to come back home. Come on back home, daughter or son. Come on back home. God loves the heck out of you. Just raise your hand and come back home. Thirdly, you don't have a church home. New Season Church is not perfect. We are not perfect by no means. We have issues from the pulpit to the back door. One thing I guarantee you we'll do at this church, we will press towards the mark of a hot call on Christ Jesus in your back. We will die trying for you. I'm not perfect. Don't claim to be. But I serve and follow a perfect God. And I would love to be your pastor because I believe about you the way God believes about you. God said you are fearfully and wonderfully made. God said you're the apple of his eye. And God said you are blessed to be a blessing. And I want to pull that out of you by preaching and teaching his word. I would love to be your pastor this morning. If you're here this morning and God said new seasons is your, is your family, would you please at your seat? Just lift your hands. The pastor, I need to be part of this church family this morning. Like, just lift your hand. Raise your hand. No matter where you are, I want to pray right now. Father, in the name of Jesus. And those who are saying maybe next week, maybe tomorrow, Today is the day of salvation. If you know you would die tonight, you're not sure if you would face eternity. That's the question you need to ask. You're not sure. You need to raise your hand and say, Pastor, I need Jesus Christ. I'm not sure if I died tonight, what would happen? We want to sell that issue with you. If you're here today, please, if you have not accepted Christ as saved, would you please raise your hand this morning? God bless those who hear in the sound of my voice. Bless those who hear in the sound of my voice. God, would you keep me in God until we meet again? Bless him, God, with your everlasting love. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Give God some praise.